All right, guys, so today I'm going to be helping you guys out with formatting your own lesson plan using Microsoft Word. Now, this lesson plan that I will be formatting is for one single lesson. So it's not for a unit, it's not for a week, it's just one single lesson. I'm also gonna come up here and I'm going to change the font. Now, the reason why I'm changing the font is because I personally don't like Calibri. I, I don't like it, um, but you want to make sure that you're using a professional font. <laughs> this is for an evaluation, or maybe you're a student in college learning to be a teacher or whatever. You want to make sure it's a professional font. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change the layout. I'm going to change the orientation. I'm going to make it landscape. Now, personally, I like lesson plans in the landscape form. That's what I like, that's what I use. I think it looks better. But if you're more of a portrait person, by all means, you can still do this format in portrait. You just kind of have to alter some things that I'm gonna be showing. But again, you can do it. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to actually add on the rulers. Now the reason why I'm gonna add on the rulers is because this next part, I'm gonna be doing tabs. So that way when I hit the tab button, it goes to that part. In, on the sheet of paper. So I'm gonna hit it at three, and then I'm gonna hit it again at seven. Now, if you're doing it in the portrait landscape, just so you guys know, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the top bar on there where you put your name, your subject, your grade, and like the date. So depending on if you're doing portrait, you can kind of alter this. Um, and if, you, if you're not giving yourself enough space, you can always make the font smaller. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal, but on the top part of your lesson plan, you do want your name, your subject, the grade, and then the date that this lesson is going to be on. So, and the next thing you do is you just take the tab off because you just, you don't need it anymore. Now, the next thing you wanna add to your lesson plan, which is extremely, extremely important, this is what you're gonna write on your board or at least hopefully you write it on your board, is the objective. What's the objective for this lesson? What is your goal? What do you want your students to accomplish in this lesson? That's your objective. That definitely needs to go in your lesson plan. That needs to be one of the first things you put in your lesson plan. I skip some lines, and then I'm gonna put in the next most important thing that you gotta put in your lesson plan, and that is the standards. Now the standards are very important, whether it's your state stand standards or it's maybe the common core standards. If your school district and your school wants you to incorporate that, which most states are have adopted the common core and that's still around. As far as I know, there isn't any other educational curriculum coming out anytime soon. There hasn't been talk of it. So right now common core is still implemented. And so you wanna make sure that you add all the standards that will be in your lesson. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to put in there are just materials. Now the materials, some people like to add that to their lesson plan, some people don't. But the reason why I like adding it is because if this is the first time I'm doing this lesson, I'm gonna kind of forget what I'm gonna need the next year. And so I wanna be able to look back on my lesson plans and make sure that I'm getting all the materials that I need. Also, if you are being evaluated, it's good for the evaluator to know exactly what is being used in the classroom, maybe how technology is being utilized, what do the kids need, like what kind of things are being used. And so that can just be a good thing to put in there. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is that we are gonna get into the description of the lesson, like the activities that you have planned, like how your lesson is actually going to go. What are the steps you're gonna take? What are the kids actually gonna be doing? So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to insert table. You are going to do a table that has three columns and then a minimum of three rows. Um, again, if you have more rows, then that's 100% up to you in your lesson. You can easily add more rows to a table. It's not difficult. You can also add more columns. Maybe if you wanna add a different section of your table, it's totally up to you. But right away, as you can see, is that I, I changed the width of these columns. I made the first column one on time. I labeled that one time. And the reason why I labeled it time is because if you're a first time teacher or maybe you're a teacher that needs to work on time management, you need to make sure that you put in there how much time each activity is supposed to take. That way you can effectively plan your lesson from bell to bell. The middle column I just labeled activity. 
couldn't think of a fancier word for it at the moment, but activity is just what your kids will actually be doing. All right, now the last column is differentiation. Now what this is, is basically how are you going to accommodate to different children's needs? How are you gonna make sure that every student is being met with their needs. Now this is definitely where you're gonna put in there with your IEP accommodations. And yes, it is important that you do that because by law you are required to do IEP accommodations. So this is just, you know, what are you gonna do for that student that's hard of hearing? What are you gonna do for that student that can't really see very well? What are you gonna do for that student that is at a lower level? What are you gonna do with that student that has learning deficiencies? This is where you're gonna put that in there. All right, now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these rows larger. It's super easy to do that just by going into layout and changing the height, very easy to do. Now, the first row I'm gonna do is just, just what you're gonna do right off the bat. Now, it's super important that you make sure that your students are doing something from bell to bell. Now, what I would like to do and what, you know, what my husband does, because my husband's also a teacher, is that as soon as your students come into the room, they have a question to work on. They have something to work on. Either it's your quick start, I called it bell work, but it's just what your kids do as soon as they come into the classroom and they sit down. That way it gives you time to kind of get your worksheets together or maybe write something on the board, take attendance, anything like that. And again, this is just five minutes. So that's the first part of your lesson is just this quick start and bell work. Now the next part of your activity is, you know, kind of like the bulk of your lesson. Maybe this is 45 minutes, maybe it's an hour, depending on how long your class periods are. You know, there are some days where we only had 30 minute class periods. So this is just the bulk of your lesson. This is what your kids are going to be doing a majority of it the time. Again, this is the lesson activity. This is where you describe what you will be doing, what your students will be doing, you know, what they're trying to accomplish, all that good stuff. That goes right here in this second row. Now, the last part, as you can see, it's super easy to add another row. If you need to add more rows, like maybe you have three different parts. Maybe you do, I do, we do, you do, or anything like that. You can easily add that on there. Not that difficult to add. Now the last part, you know, you always want some type of closure. Maybe it's an exit ticket. Maybe it's just a quick review, anything like that. You want to make sure that you have some sort of closure. And you don't want to leave anything out in your lesson plan that you're going to do in the lesson. You want everything covered. You want your lesson plan to be as detailed as it can be. That each activity that these students do, each of these different things that you have the students doing, it has its own role for it. Now the last part of the lesson plan, which is super important, is that you have to have some sort of assessment. How are you going to assess your students to make sure that they're learning what you wanted them to learn? That they are actually accomplishing what your objective is? How are you going to make sure of that? How are you going to see where your students are at with this certain concept or format or anything like that? How are you going to make sure your kids are learning that? And so that's where the assessment comes in. You need to make sure that you actually fill this out. And it, it can be something as simple as, you know, doing a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Maybe you have, I know a lot of what a lot of teachers do is that at the end of each lesson, they have their kids write a sticky note on the bulletin board. And the bulletin board is, I got it. I don't got it. Kind of got it. I'm completely lost, you know, and they have them put the sticky note to where they are that day. That's another, that's an, that's an assessment. Just anything like that, you need to make sure you put that in your lesson plan as well. All right, guys, well, here you have it. This is a super easy format that you can do with your lesson plan. It doesn't take much time. Again, this is with Microsoft Word. Super simple, super easy. Now, if you are still kind of lost and you want a better example of how to fill out a lesson plan, I do have another video of how to actually write out a lesson plan and the kind of information that needs to be in there. And you can go ahead and check that video out on my channel. But thanks so much for watching.